Hey, folks, this is the TDL, T, oh, shit. TLDM podcast with Tyler Samples and Alan Link. We are two DMs sharing a world and playing in each other's games. Yeah. And uh, today, let's just jump into our recap, Alan. Sure. Um, oh, boy. What a doozy. Yeah, we haven't yet played your uh, end cap of your campaign arc. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. So what we did play today was... What was supposed uh, to be the end cap of this campaign arc. And sort of was. Yeah. Well, uh, not as much as I would have liked. <laughs> yeah. Not as triumphantly as you would. Or like. even not, not even as failure as I would have liked. Oh, yeah. You're right. You want it to just be done. Yes. So anyway, there was a the, the equivalent to a TPK. I say the equivalent because nobody died. They were just enslaved by an Aboleth, um, which was not anything that like I brought out of the ether that was the the plan the whole time was that there was an Aboleth who just wanted to enslave everybody. Um, he just ended up, it just ended up doing a, a good job of it. Yep. Um, in part because we had less players. Um, play, well, why don't I bet? We, we only had three players play today instead of our like five or six that we normally do. Um, but that's fine. Um, and I, I guess I'll just summarize it really quickly. Sure. So... <clears throat> Last week they had done, they were in this castle and uh, investigating the mayor of this town that uh, Alan's character, Srad, was supposed to be the lord of and uh, had determined that the mayor seemed to be on the up and up um, due to some insight checks that didn't turn anything up. And um, they, this week, um, he joined them after they had been fighting some like horrific acapella singers, um, s- like acapella singer servants types. Um, and he promptly uh, made sick because uh, he was disturbed by the gore, further making him feel like he was an innocuous threat. Um, then he, uh, as they were fighting some other stuff, he turned on them. Um, they fought for a long time, uh, given that he was a were rat, um, Alan's character specifically couldn't do a whole lot because he didn't have any silvered weapons or any magical attacks, which I'm sure felt frustrating. Yeah. Um, and then, um, he, uh, they encountered his patron, which turned out to be an Aboleth and the, uh, levels below the castle and, um, fought valiantly, but it had been a while since we had a short rest. There was a lot of, uh, charging ahead versus regrouping and, um, the party kind of one by one fell, got back up, fell, got back up until they just couldn't get back up no more. Yep. And then discovered that they were also now, as Alan put it best, acapella soldiers in the army of the Aboleth. Ugh. Um, slimy, translucent, uh, and unable to go more than 10 minutes without moisture on their, their slimy skin without suffering the consequences of drying out like a slug. And that's where it ended, more or less. It, where it actually ended was that, and then a discussion of what we wanted to do next, and me suggesting rather than, or suggesting you know we could make new characters to save the old ones, kind of go the standard routes of how one deals with a, a party wipe thing, but because I'm trying to play, I want wanted this campaign specifically to not involve death of characters um because we had enough of that the last time i suggested instead that we just narrate forward to a month later where they are fighting uh sort of enslaved in this army and due to a uh fireball from a a, a victim of their onslaught uh they all are dealt damage and actually broke free of the uh enslavement curse or uh charm and so now that they are free they are still suffering the the consequences the physical consequences of their encounter but otherwise are free to uh abscond back to flurn and try to finish what they started um which personally i'm i think will be pretty fun i think that i think the stakes have been sufficiently raised to make this final encounter very satisfying and also a fun way to see how you guys handle tactics uh now now that you know the lay of the land um so that's the the short the shortened version of it alan what was your experience <laughs> what was that i mean that's what happened yeah um yeah i know you were pretty frustrated yeah i mean i think it was a particularly irritating one for me just on a personal level because you're for your character or for you as a player mm, a little bit of well definitely for the character but uh also for me at the table yeah um 
partially because I, I I was I was willing to go the route of like, well, that's that's it for Srad. Like I, I kinda wanted to put the book end on that. Yeah. Um because I I just can't imagine like he I can't imagine him like doing well after all of this, you know? Like Jesus, he's fa- he failed his mission. No one's recognized him. He promised a bunch of people that he would like help them, and now instead he's standing side by side with them, being forced for a month to do like horrible atrocities, and also is a slug person. Like that's pretty much the the lowest you can possibly go. Yeah, rock bottom. Um, so there there's that angle, and then there's also just like I fe- I, I personally felt a little handcuffed a lot of the session. Yeah, because. I just didn't have anything productive. I ended up passing like a lot of my turns because yeah. there was literally nothing productive I could do. Um, and uh, due due to immunities, and then due to uh, some poor decision making. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there were some other things where I was like, "Oh, this is okay." <laughs> like what? If it's about mine, like we're teal damning. All yeah, the way. that's true. For example, uh, the the bracelet thing caught me off guard. Um, oh yeah because we we had been like detecting magic and like doing all kinds of stuff because we i mean we we came in pretty hot on mayor stevis you did and that we did we like did literally everything we could to clear him right and then it turned out that he was like haha gotcha well felt bad yeah aaron and i talked about this because aaron couldn't be there so i was uh talking through stuff with her you guys did detect magic you did detect magic on him i uh i will acknowledge that i forgot i didn't do it purposely i forgot to include that like the the bracelet pinged i thought you guys were pretty clear that it was the key of rethador uh because i thought somebody had said that at the table sure but like Uh, none of us in this game know what that right means right um and uh he did i it was an interesting thing where i was like it's interesting to play a duplicitous character who is like wants you to believe him and is charismatic enough for that to to happen when the roles happen Mm -hmm. so like the insight checks didn't beat his deception role and then i was like i'm kind of curious to see because i feel like saying the like you don't you don't believe that he's saying anything uh that he's lying is like a way of saying he's lying Mm -hmm. uh with with people playing and that that's like not as i was just interested to see what it would be like if if there actually felt like you'd been deceived versus like with holding meta game knowledge from yourselves of like well we all we as char- players know that he's lying but we as characters don't um versus the like this guy is a good guy oh shit he f- fucking sucks was one that i was curious to see how that felt because i just like that's just a thing that i've always been or that i've been dealing with recently of the like how you handle an insight check that fails without it because be- otherwise it's like a failed insight check where you're like yeah he doesn't seem to be lying is like um is if is like the equivalent of being like you got it for free like you still know he was lying right yeah so i, I think i think i phrase it as like yeah he he is telling the truth um and yeah i was just really interested to see what the result would be i thought it could go either way <laughs> yeah um i was glad that everybody but in that regard i think everybody being like oh i hate this guy he like that was in the moment felt very fun to me yeah um yeah and then i was really just trying to get i was really trying to figure out a way to get him away from you guys yeah because i didn't want him and the abolith attacking you at the same time well (laughs) because i was trying to get you guys to either deal with him or deal with the other thing and and like so once once you guys moved in and saw the abolith like he stopped attacking like i he was no longer in the the battlefield because it was like you guys will absolutely die if you're fighting yeah i mean we were pretty much already dead just to him to begin with so then a new fresh even giant or monster was i mean as soon as it came out of the water i was like all right yeah i I was ready i was resigned to the tpk at that point yeah so which is interesting because you didn't necessarily say like we got to get out of here no i mean i had done that a couple of times already yeah and it didn't really take so yeah i was just like all right i guess we're just doing this yeah so we did it yeah 
Interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, I mean, the other part that was interesting was it's the first time I've ran a character or an, uh, a monster with like legendary actions and lair actions. And even though it is intended to like simplify things down, it is still a lot to like balance out. I still wasn't doing like the lair actions between your guys' turns and everything. Yeah. In part also because it was like, oh, I'm not actually interested in annihilating you guys. I just actually only want to get you to the point that you are all wet slug creatures yeah because that that feels more interesting to me than mission actually accomplished it. yeah it, <laughs> it, it was there was uh a, like you guys did a pretty good job of holding it of like holding yourselves distant enough that you could have well, easily we couldn't run literally away leave either because rev was in the water at that point like yeah there was nothing going on well as it turns out you could become a giant bat and fly away sure yeah or like i i actually mean before rev fell in the water like once stevis did and you guys summoned like a uh sea hag to fight and then she fought something that like killed her and that probably would have been a point you could have ran away dude i mean from the start of the session all i was trying to do was close doors and get out of rooms yeah it's true but it didn't seem like that's what we wanted to do yeah yeah it was still very fun to watch <laughs> Um, and I, again, I think that there is something very fun about the idea of having, uh, uh, the ability to come back from it. Yeah. But I understand that that doesn't feel as fun to you. Uh, yeah, just, I think it wasn't something that I was interested in because I don't know. It just, it felt like, uh, this character had lost, like it was over. The story yeah. was done for this person. Yeah. Um, so I'll keep I'll keep playing it out because what we ended up settling on was this idea of like, well, let's see if we can like bounce back from this. Um, yeah. But I, I I was just a, more of a mind of like, oh, well, slug slug srad who yeah. is like humiliated is not like a character <laughs> I want to play very bad. Right. Um, yeah. So it's interesting we'll see. that he's humiliated and not infuriated. Um, I think it's both. It's mostly both. OK. But like, you know. He, I, I've been trying to play him like he's just pr- the presumptive lord of Flurin. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it at very least that's not going to be a thing for him anymore. Like, oh really? No, because lords don't like fail their people this miserably and then get turned into slugs and then attack like civilians of other towns for no reason. So okay, I think it's going to be like a. Uh, the arc I'm sort of seeing for him right now is like we come back, we kill this thing, we free Flaren, and then he just kind of like disappears into the woods. Oh yeah, so you're gonna you don't envision playing him after that? I I don't think so. I don't know. I, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. Like because to maybe, me, maybe and things yeah. might change. I don't know. In the course of gameplay, things can always change. Yeah, to me that feels like the most redemptive arc possible. Of you get to come back and be like, before we didn't know what was going on. We fought, we got knocked down, we got back up, and and then like we knew the stakes and saved the town. Right. But that's how Flurn got here in the first place. Was was Stevis showing up and like installing a new thing and all that. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Although Stevis did, uh, there was a moment where uh, using like a detect thoughts, you guys basically got Stevis's backstory. um, And essentially he did just like sneak in and destroy the town and then install himself as mayor. Yeah. Which is sort of what I feel like I'm doing. Well, you're not installing yourself as mayor. No. You are the legitimate heir of Flurn. Yeah. That was like a point I I wanted to keep in in truth throughout was like you were a hundred percent the the person of Flurin. Had you guys made it down before like into that pit of of like slime people, I was going to have one of the slime people be the Lord of Flurn who was just like, Thank you for coming to save us and then got killed by the Abolith, like sucking his energy away just to double down on you guys being that you being the Flurin, the the Florida Flurin. Yeah. But then once you guys were down there, I was like, I mean, it doesn't, it feels weird if he's just living next to, that just muddies the water even more. For if he's... Like if the Lord of Flurn is living next to, is like a slime person down there. Oh, yeah. No, nah, he's dead. Yeah, that that would have been worse. Yeah. If, if he yeah. was still alive. Yeah. Because then I have no claim. And then, right. Yeah. I wanted him to die in a, a heroic, like, you are the true heir of not a heroic, but in a like uh, un- unassailable, like you are the heir of Flurn. You are the true lord of Flurn. I mean, I'm feeling that already. So. I mean, yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah. Everybody else needs to too. But although now it seems like you need to. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. I guess I'm not feeling it anymore. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I 
we'll see. I think I still have faith. I think it's a pretty good redemption arc. We'll see. And if not, I mean, you make new characters like <laughs> gadflies. Yeah, that's true. Um, what? Uh, how are you feeling about the game tomorrow? Uh, I'm excited about it. I mean, I've been sitting on this uh, close to this arc for the while because mm-hmm. we haven't played in like over a month at this point. Yeah. Um. So looking forward to it. I'm excited to see what happens. I have to do some tweaking because uh, I don't know if I still haven't heard back quite yet from everyone if they're all coming or not. But I know yeah. we have three at least. So yeah. I'm going to balance for three and see what happens. Was that a subtle dig? Yes. <laughs> I told, I said before the game started that I hadn't balanced. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. I, I still don't feel bad about it. That's okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel great about it. I'm not like gleeful about it either. I know you don't think that's true. I'm smiling out I, of I, no, I discomfort. Believe you. I, don't believe, of, I believe you. Yeah. I do believe you. Yeah. The whole time I was like. I they have not taken any rests in a really long time uh, and like so I was like yeah he drops down the hole I'm like cool maybe they'll take a rest now I was like all right well let it, I, I literally was like he escaped yeah but yeah we didn't want to do that yeah and then when he blew past me like at the speed of light I was like okay he escaped again yeah yeah. I, yeah, I think that's that's part of what made it feel bad was I was like, I get it. Like, I, I, I hit a point where I was like, I get it. He's getting away. There's nothing we can do. Um, And it, it felt like, yeah, that just wasn't like I it, I think that's really what made it feel bad for me is that I was like, man, I just really have no control or options over anything that's happening. Yeah. Um, well, and, and I can't even like I, like I can't I'm not even impactful in this scenario at all because so you were with the tripping the only yeah. But the only I was because I was like, damn, the only literally the only piece of like treasure I have is a fucking super soaker, <laughs> so, which, which I used. was effective. It was effective. Yeah. But I was like, man, I can't like I can't deal damage. And I'm like the damage person. Yeah. Um, And I which is funny because you're not you're the grapple daddy. I am grapple daddy, but I also can't grapple something that can like fly. Um, Yeah. Or is in the water. And I was like, damn, I am useless. Oh, that's what surprised me. You can grapple in the water. I, but I what? Why would I do that? I don't know. Because you're grapple daddy yeah but what that's so foolish why because we've already established that anything within five feet of it gets just jolted every turn why would i latch onto that i don't know because because you're a hero oh man and you're a grapple daddy i am a grapple daddy yeah but then the one time i did grapple him i got cauldroned yeah he used his once a day yeah to do arcane gate yeah that sucked yeah yeah, it was also it's also interesting. It's the first time that I've tried to actually play a character's abilities tactically. Um and it's interesting to just experience it as not being fun for the players. Oh, that was weird. He just felt so strong. Yeah. He had haste. Yeah. Was the was the issue. Yeah. He was pretty strong. He wasn't you know what he wouldn't have been strong against? All five of you. I know it. Yeah. That hurt too. Or or, or even the three of you if you guys had taken a break. Yeah. Yeah. These are all things that I know. Yeah. 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 Right. Especially since our short rests are 15 minutes. Right. Yeah. So. So that's yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's all. I, I know. And I know I'm coming across real salty on this episode. That's and fine. I just we just am finished. salty. And yeah, that's we just, just how it is. The game. Yeah. We finished like 20 minutes ago. And I'm aware that I'm salty. And I just am salty. And I'm not apologizing for it. It's how I feel. I don't need you to apologize. I'm just to anyone listening who's like, man, Alan's such a whiner. Well, sorry about it, folks. Yeah. I mean, it is also the first T, like the first, I would say TPW, Total Party Wipe. Yeah. As opposed to a TPK. And man, if you know anything about me, I do not mind characters dying or no, like you losing. You love characters dying. I don't even mind characters I, losing. I think you do mind characters losing. I, I really don't mind characters losing. I don't, I just don't like feeling like there's nothing I could do. Yeah. That's sucks like that doesn't feel good right um trying and losing like that's fun like intentionally doing volleyball moves instead of actually fighting things right and like being like well i'm at 18 hit points but damn it would be fucking rad to do a volleyball move right now um that's fine like that's a choice uh but being like well literally everything i have in my backpack is useless and i cannot catch this thing because it's faster than me is like well i guess i i guess i stand around is like that doesn't feel good and then uh, on top of that to be like well we lost and then be like but now i still have to like 
be loser man is <laughs> see that's what it is you don't like you don't mind setbacks you don't like losing i i well is what it seems like i guess or maybe i hate setbacks because this is a setback oh i don't like setbacks i'd rather lose than setback i, guess, I see is what it is i see Maybe. That, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. It's you want to either cleanly win or get to be done and, and play a new character. Kind of. Yeah. Because there, well, there's, there's been plenty of times where like we've like had serious setbacks and I was like, damn, this is a serious setback. Yeah. But the, the only times I've ever been like, all right, I don't want to be this person anymore is like things have warped so like irrevocably that i was like damn i just don't yeah like that we talked about this a little bit when um rake got helmet helmeted yes and i was like yeah i mean i'm just like helmet stooge now right that's not that's i don't want to be helmet stooge so that's not fun yeah it's interesting anytime or like when soak got teleported and i was like yeah well he doesn't really fit here i like this isn't really where he's at yeah, you don't handle setbacks well at all. It's not even, I really don't, I, I don't know, maybe it is setbacks. I just feel like the, it feels more like, oh, if if the character's becoming different or like being changed or un, I'm unable to play the character, then mm-hmm. I don't, I just don't want to play him anymore. Yeah, it's interesting because to me, uh, to a certain degree, it's a little like, um, those are all instances where actions have, where the actions have real consequences mm-hmm. and that that's, yeah, it's just interesting because it feels a little bit like it's like when actions have true consequences, like when you become, uh, when you decide to like break apart the arc to save a uh, murderer. Um, oh man, B- but to be fair, again, because that's literally the only thing I established was that if he was actually, um, I don't even remember his name anymore. Peeny, uh, Peeny. If Peeny was actually in touch with the, my lord, like, yeah. yeah, of course I'm gonna like, right. do something about it. And then of I, course, that's, that doesn't feel like I have any choice, right? But then it's like similarly, yeah, it's an interesting thing because then for me as uh, DM in terms of like creating a world that has weight to it at all is like, well, of course, other people will have other lines that they draw in the sand also, which would be of like, well, like using that of like, well, I'm going to stop uh, like a miscarriage of justice and an attempt to assault like our home from the inside <laughs> from a dinosaur. Like I'm going to try to stop that at all costs. Sure, but then I would argue that the only reason I did that is because I tried having a conversation and someone pulled a gun on me. Wait, when was that? That's that same moment where they were going to sentence Peeny and I was like, stop. Uh, well, you were like, stop, and you were getting ready to do stuff, weren't you? No, I was just having a conversation. Okay. And they, I was trying to perhaps do some charisma-based <laughs> moves. Yes. Um, but then the leader, I forget his name. I've been trying to remember too. I Is can't it Ratchet? His name. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ratchet had a bane pipe on my back. Which doesn't mean you can't talk. Well, it feels pretty threatening. It is a threat. <laughs> That's what I mean though. This is like the world can threaten. That's fair. Also, yeah, there, there's a certain degree where it's interesting because um, I wonder how much of it is just like playing different tropes because like those like that to me or even like this thing with the Aboleth feel to me like such standard fantasy hero tropes. Um, but that might just be uh, the then what I'm playing into and it might not be that that's the kind of game we're all interested in playing, which I suppose is what's interesting ab- yeah. about the whole thing is it's like, yeah, and that's always the interesting thing to me, especially with like our group in either in either game of like um performers that it's like uh for me i am still a little interested in seeing like how people react in the context of you are in not necessarily in a story i suppose in a narrative in which like things happen and we are progressing forward versus like a sitcom where we're essentially the same like every week kind of resets or even has like these like mini season arcs that but like the characters don't change Mm -hmm. um it is interesting to me when it's like external things that present consequences or like risks and rewards or failures uh or rewards and setbacks i suppose of like that's interesting to me in the con while married to the context of also you're a volleyball team and we're trying to get back to the volleyball game (laughs) but like that i am super looking forward to the volleyball game same um and i really thought you guys were going to next week i thought we were going to get done today damn i don't know uh i might make i'm yeah hmm, i might still do that I might just make it that you, (laughs) I really wish, actually, now that I think about it, 
that instead that he had imprisoned and I might do this regardless that he imprisoned you guys to have a volleyball team so like force us play volleyball yeah Hmm. to send you back as his volleyball team oh man that actually is pretty fun and I might do that instead because uh yeah I also didn't expect you guys to all I I honestly thought one of you would go down and the rest of you would get away no we're not gonna leave like there's, right. that's not really an option you, right. you can't just like abandon somebody well I especially meant, when I know that like I actually don't mean permanently I mean like for, for a short rest worth of time oh well, that's basically abandoning them to death. Because, like, if yeah. if we leave the room, what? Why would they? We have no reason to believe that they would be like, got one, and yeah. like <laughs> ch- right. chain them up or something. Yeah. Um, like at at very best, we would assume that then death rolls would happen, and it's just up to the dice. Yeah. Um, Although he was saying like, why don't you just join us? Yeah, but that. But I understand. Like, that's not a choice either. Yeah. Like no, what, I'm saying like for. I was I was trying to give context throughout of like he's just trying to gain oh I see new people yeah but I understand that that didn't come through no I no I mean it was obvious that he was like trying to you know did the classic like what's your greatest wish like I can mm-hmm. do that for you like that's that's a clear uh messaging of like making a dark deal or whatever but um and I've certainly played characters who would have been like all right yeah but I, that wasn't this oh wasn't I didn't expect game. anybody to do that I more just meant like he's not gonna kill you guys he's oh. gonna convert you over yeah to slam people um in any case though so yeah it is interesting um playing those different conventions and like figuring out what the line is on them of like like this i i for me i like a silly goofy adventure feels very fun most of the time with like hint like moments where it like is like oh fuck and i feel like so far that's the kind of game we've been playing throughout which has been fun um but now that i just said that out loud i realize like oh i definitely want it to be that you guys have to be his enslaved volleyball team <laughs> that's way more fun to me than like being part of a marching army yeah i'd i'm i'd be down to play that yeah i just like don't i don't want to be a, like a be. murderer slave that yeah. sucks yeah no that's definitely what it's going to be that was also me at like when we had like two minutes left of the game being like uh okay let me think on my feet yeah so i don't i don't mind retconning retconning that because all right that's barely i'm more into that because i was like oh god i'm not like i'm a slug man you're still a slug man uh, great um cool (laughs) yeah yeah uh it's like damn i'm a slug man i like just got the shit beat out of me for like an hour and a half and like now, I also have to like do things that my care I like ugh, would find repulsive and yeah. horrible, and gonna have to live with them for the rest of my life. Like Jesus Christ! Yeah, that's that's rough. That is rough. Yeah. No, you yeah, you guys are definitely volleyball team. You're you're now the the Flurn Slimers. Yeah. Yeah. Which is funny because of the two, I would assume that that would be the the worst setback for it, for your character. But no. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's really funny. Um, in any case, uh, what else should we talk about? I don't know. I mean, that was a that was a, a lot. It felt like a lot happened in the session. I don't know how well we did at like breaking down the moment to moment in relation yeah, well, to I like mean, the feelings. We can try to. Um, yeah. When I'm just, I don't know. I'm curious to see what, when I edit this later. Like, I'm curious to see how this feels i'll probably hate it <laughs> eh, that's fine i still think it's interesting I maybe because like how often do you get to listen to like a like player dm like blow by blow yeah that you weren't involved in, like, so you don't have to have, feel have a personal stake in it yeah where instead of everyone leaves and you try your best never to mention it again right you listen to two people like get into fucking it. have to talk their yeah. way out of it um <clears throat> Yeah, you don't get that kind of content anywhere else, folks. That's TLDM all the way through, right there. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I guess like I mean, I know when I, I feel like I know when it stopped being fun for you was when it was when you realized he had damage immunities. Yeah, and that took me a while to too. Was the like, other thing I was, was like, Jesus, I I feel like we're wailing on this guy and nothing's happening. Yeah, and then truly nothing was happening, which was also a thing of of I know your characters didn't know it but it felt like you as players didn't realize it for a while Mm-mm. but it was like but you do know that he's a, ra- a were rat well I, mm, and that's and that's where I got screwed up is because we had established the warg thing yeah so I was like oh well they're taking damage from me so if even if he's a warg like this yeah. should be fine but yeah um, no Sevis was different yeah and it and it I think that that was part of it, too, where I felt like there was information that our characters had access to that I felt like we were missing. Yeah, um, I, which is interesting because I actually think the opposite. It was like your characters wouldn't have any reason to know he's a warg 
or anything Well, we didn't else. until he right. started attacking but, us. But you're, you as players, because th- that felt to me like a, a bit of a metagamey freebie, uh, because I was specifically, you guys were like, oh shit, it's Stevis from our earlier uh, campaign, like from the o- other timeline, Stevis was this were rat. I wonder if it's the same. And I was well, like, he was just a rat, right? Wasn't no, he-, he was a were rat that got turned into a rat. Oh, by Snevis. Is that what happened? I thought he was a, a rat folk, like a straight up yeah, rat folk. He, yeah, rat folk, which we were were rats. Oh, was what it had always been. Oh, it also yeah. might just be that time enough time. Yeah, I, I didn't asked. remember that at all. Uh, I thought yeah, they were all just rat people. No, Snevis was a were rat, or they were rat people, rat folk who were just were rats. Oh, um, and uh, Stevis was uh, was their like poster child. Right, I remember him, that him being a big deal. Yeah. So this is like his great, great. Um, so that I assumed you guys knew. No, I don't think we put that together. Yeah. And then the other aspect of it that I think threw us off was it It seemed like he was also being a- attacked, like psychically assaulted like yeah. we were when the attacks were originating from him. Right. Um. So we, we were just, I think we were just completely blindsided by that. Yeah. 100%. And that was also me being like yeah this is how he's gonna do this is he's gonna like play a victim alongside everybody so that nobody notices yeah until they get like a perception roll in well actually the way that it worked there wasn't any somatic components to it at all so it was like oh he's just gonna try to stay close to everybody and then be like where is this coming from um which yeah is interesting It, it it where it is like that's how that would work like that's how that would happen uh and i don't and it's like one of the first times that i have tried to actually play to the intelligence of the character of of like the enemy uh and it's funny that then the feeling is is like oh this sucks yeah (laughs) well because i think the the part of it that's tricky is like we only see and even then through like a murky mirror yeah um we only see what we're given right so I think at that point we had just been like told as many times that he was on our side that we just had no choice but to believe it. Which is funny because, yeah, I only told you once. You yeah. Guys, you guys reinforced to each other multiple times that he was on your side. Yeah. But that's fair. I understand that. How would you have done it differently? Um, That's just always so tricky of playing people. I, I mean, with the, for example, with the Danons, I just made it like where they were originally just kind of like benevolent, cool people. Right. But the party, you guys were so convinced that there was something wrong with them that I was like, you're just right. You're, yeah. you're right. Like, right. But what about the reverse? Um, in the reverse. So I don't know. I think even if, uh, in the play, for example, in the play by post I'm running right now, um, there, the party has run into intellect devourers, which I love using they're the, best. they're the best monsters in the book. Um, they're not my favorite monsters, but they are the best monster. Um, they're the best monster in the book. Yes, agree. Yeah. Uh, and something I made very clear was that there was something wrong with the, even though even though they like failed all their like shit to like figure out what was going on and like blah blah blah. Um, I made it very clear that there was like something wrong with the people who had been uh, intellect devoured, uh, or at very least that people who knew those people well before they were intellect devourer Mm -hmm. um, could tell that something was wrong with them. Um, Because I think it's rough from the player side. It's, it's rough putting together uh, puzzle pieces when only like, like the, the only clear picture of the puzzle at large is behind the screen. Right. So that's, I guess that's how, that's what I would I would have done that I guess differently I think yeah but and I I, but, I wouldn't have wanted to ruin it either I think I think there's probably I I don't I might I don't even have a solution maybe but I think there's there's probably a way to like create a sense of um, mystery or uh, uncertainty without um without without like withholding information question mark yeah i don't know that i withheld any information though no i'm sorry and and i'm I'm just talking generally i'm not even talking specifically about this. yeah uh yeah it's interesting i think i think what it is is like thinking back through it is and this is always the hardest thing with especially with like this group is getting like getting you guys to take moments to clarify out information amongst yourselves of uh and and so then sort of relying on that you guys have meta knowledge about stuff to fill in the gaps of stuff for example that you know you are going to clear a castle so then being like well he's the head of he's he's the he owns the castle so like 
there probably is a pretty good chance yeah. that like and we came in like that i think yeah. that's what threw us off is we came in like okay and then people were like talking shit about the mayor and we were like got it yeah. and then when we like went and actively investigated him we felt i think we got rebuffed so we were like well we're not going to oh. do that thing we always do where we kill an npc for no reason or like make enemies with an npc um, right where we like <laughs> now we end up getting punished for it almost right well and f- yeah for me it was just yeah i think it was it was things where i was like oh he has this creepy mansion he's charming and he's being polite and like friendly to you guys and like he just doesn't feel threatened by you at all um so he's like not going to be like sneaky or weird other than that like the whole place is fucking weird as shit right but all and the only thing is is that he's not that he's tr- not like not treating it as weirdly normal just treating it as like i'm just like a normal dude um and it was a little funny to me that that was enough i, I think it was because there, you guys well, were, there were puzzle like i mean there were s- just enough clues like enough things that pointed us in the direction of like no he's just legitimately oblivious and dumb um where yeah. we were like all right i guess he is just legitimately oblivious and dumb like what things felt like they pointed that way other than like the insight he, checks well, again yeah so insight checks were one um that we detected no enchantments of any kind or anything right but then the detect magics turned up nothing else also where we were like okay well Well, it did turn up abjuration magic right so which which i think we all were like oh he just like happened he like protected himself from this thing inadvertently yeah Um, and then there was a thing where i was like i'm surprised you guys didn't investigate him as a magic user more and so we did we were like isn't magic illegal here and he said no and we were like all right well yes i mean i guess i mean more broadly like where did you learn magic or you know oh yeah things like that i mean there's like 12 of us in the party who use magic so that doesn't seem too unusual um and then he like he just seemed so like confused and like he threw up at the sight of like yeah the rat people then we were like wow guess he's just like really not understanding what's going on yeah so his Um, behavior threw you guys off yeah well it just felt like when we like we came in actively investigating him Mm -hmm. and the investigations turned up nothing and i think and this is kind of on us as like players i guess where we had kind of decided like we're not going to do that thing anymore where we just like kick down a door and point a finger at somebody um, yeah. and then it was like well great so the fucking one time <laughs> we yeah. don't do that from my perspective it was still of like I don't know I, I mean I'm not castigating I, or I am I don't know but was that like the way you guys investigated him was to directly ask him questions and investigate him and then go off of his behavior as opposed to like uh like following him like like doing any of the sort of stealthy Oh, I mean, we just hadn't found if we had when we gone out in the laboratory, if we had found anything like related to him, that would have helped. Yeah, but we didn't like there. We just we just never everything we tried to pin on him slid off. And then everything we actively investigated had no tie basically to him whatsoever. And I think from our side of the screen, I we just didn't if there were if there was anything obvious or that like we could or should have been doing. I don't think we just ever caught any of that. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I that and which is yeah. I also have been trying to encourage you guys to sit in, in or not not like immediately go to violence as the first reaction to stuff. Um good luck on doing this one. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> because it was like you still yeah, there still is a lot of like attack first, figure out later. I don't know. Uh yeah, I mean it's interesting and I'm still like trying to to sort through how part of it was I needed today. I wanted to get today done. So rather than, so I escalated a little bit just because I was like, I don't think we want to spend another session. Like um, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like we're necessarily like comparing notes and seeing what it turns up. It feels like we're just uh, moving forward and reacting to. How do you mean? Well, like, so we got all of the information of like that map you have in front of you of that stuff. Um, and there was, there wasn't ever really a like, what does this all mean conversation amongst the party? It was like, let's go to this place. Let's go to this place. Sure. And, and, ex- and just experience whatever is there. Um, yeah. I think we just had like, we, we didn't have 
for at least from my perspective, I guess I shouldn't speak for everybody, but from my perspective, I was like, well, we haven't turned up anything. Like, mm, yeah. so we have to keep investing. Like, there's, yeah. we can't just stop. Right. Um, so <laughs> we were like, let's go to the laboratory. And we go to the laboratory and like the, ha- like, you know, nothing, spe- there's nothing really there. Um, right. Or you like go we to go to the kitchen and it's like, aha, they've taken over the kitchen. Um, and homie just ate food with us out of this dump. Um, so yeah. probably again, like seems to sort of point in the direction of like, he doesn't really know what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then we were like, well, I guess we have to keep looking around cause we just haven't like, we don't have, we don't have any answers right, right now. Um, so I guess we, I, I don't know. I think, at least for me, even if we had stopped to be like, well, what do we have? And like gone through it all. I, d- I don't think we would have had an answer. Um, right. We were sort of like at that point leaning into whatever the lead acapella lady's name was as our primary suspect. But we just had we just had like no nothing to pin on anybody. Right. Um, except like, like that whole 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, And so we were like, well, we'll just keep looking. Right. And then it just felt like we were suddenly way over our heads like even tr- like for try it felt like we were trying to take it slow and then we were just like somehow way over our heads very yeah. suddenly which i you were uh and that actually is another thing that like yeah i i don't i th- i think that's similar to like there's the two styles of of dming you know where you can like make the challenges equivalent to the level of the thing so it like goes through or like you can just sort of make a map and like if depending on where you go, you encounter the these challenges and you just have to know to like run away or not. Um, and this was definitely like this of like, oh, if you go down into the hidden lab area, like unprepared, that's going to like there's a, a CR 10 thing down there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not going to be like less CR 10 just because like you run down there. Sure. Unprepared for it. Um, and then. Whereas the like wargs and uh that were up there and stuff are like, like everywhere else was like relatively tame and easy to fight. Uh, you guys just like chased after the the biggest baddest things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is certainly frustrating, and. I think some of it did just come from like uh, a staggered start in terms of players showing up yeah. late and like and that's a little weird all over too, the place. Of feeling like, oh, we're the ones who showed up, so yeah. we're the ones who get hurt. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Although to me, again, I, yeah, it's just the difference of like uh, a story where you're not dead. It feels to me like like still an interesting story. Like uh, where if if my character hasn't died. Um, then it's like, cool, I can still do stuff. That's fun to me with it. But I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I, we haven't, I mean, we haven't had the flip side uh, experience a whole lot because we've just been, we haven't encountered like, well, yeah, we have. Uh, when we fought those gnolls, that mm-hmm. was like, we came into something way over our heads. But that, and then that was like my character consciously being like, I'm still going to, I'm going to wade into the thick of this. Like, I'm not going to run away from this. Yeah. In fact, me being directly like, let's, and I, I've this. certainly made that decision before yeah. and I don't like losing a character over it. I don't mind because that's like right. then that's consequences to an action I've taken. Right. Um. I think the where I draw the, the line or like feel like I'm falling over into like not fun territory is where I feel like um either either the decision like there wasn't there wasn't a, an option or that then the consequences are like uh completely out of my hands is the other thing too right um yeah i mean what would be a consequence that would have been in your hands so like if i if if we woke up and uh in this like watery dungeon and we were like servants of the thing um a chance to like escape it or like not have to do wandering army stuff or like put Um, on the thing or like sing the acapella songs um, I mean, the the first day you're definitely gonna have to sing acapella songs. But the in terms of the wandering army, again, that was at last uh, of it. Me working through options. I think that is as simple as just being like, I'd actually rather not be part of a wandering army because that makes me feel weird. And then it's like, cool. Well, then I can come up with a million other things to do for that, or like other solutions to how this gets resolved. We can just end on a cliffhanger and sure. come back to it next week. Sure. Just but just like loss of agency in general feels bad, you know. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I, if, if I'm gonna die, like then it's like, oh man, well fuck, I died. I could have, I should have played that differently or done that differently. Like when we TPK'd, I was like, wow, we TPK'd, and I was like, it was fine. Yeah. Um, but then 
there was, and I think we talked about this too in the episode where we talked about uh, Rake's death, mm-hmm. where it like hit a, because I remember that also hitting hitting a point where I was like, well, I just want to die already. Like I'm, I, right. clearly this is the moment. Like let's just do this. And uh, feeling like, well, we we like earnestly wiped, um, and we did our best, but it wasn't enough. Now that I guess part of part of the the agency part of this one for me feels like well now I'm still like stuck to Srad somehow yeah um where I'm like yeah but like he's done like his to me for as far as I'm concerned his yeah. story is done which is interesting to me that because it does feel a little bit like non fatal setbacks to you feel like uh stripping of agency uh, as opposed to uh like you yeah like to me it's it's a little bit more of like well narratively there are some times where like the story like we don't win every encounter sure and like we get put into a new complicated situation but like and so so the like yeah the the uh like being part of a a roving army is like totally yeah drop that that's not a big deal but of like yeah you failed um and you just have to try again but while also being a slime person feels like that doesn't feel like much of an agency stripping that just feels like a complication right yeah but but it feels a little bit like it's like i guess uh, to me it doesn't it doesn't feel it feels i guess it feels worse to me maybe yeah than it is perceived perceived to feel yeah i'm just curious as to i guess i can't really put my finger on like why exactly that is or like verbalize what what the specifics of it are yeah I don't. I don't know. I guess I, I'm having trouble putting it into words. Yeah, interesting. But I, I felt. I guess I felt similarly about uh, the best way I can describe this feeling is the the feeling I had when uh, Soak got teleported in the future. Yeah. Because that was another thing where I was like, well, I just woke up and I'm playing a character who's now in a completely different world. Yeah. Um, and everyone he knows is gone, and like his wife took the thing he had his literal like questing goal and disappeared with it, and it's gone also. Um, and I was like, damn, like every everything I was playing, everything everything I was playing is now gone. Um, so I was like, well, I don't really like. I'm not interested in like. I guess this is this is a me thing where I'm like, well, I, all the things I was interested in playing about this person are different now or or right. gone. Um, so I'd all rather the, make I'd rather just like make a new person and like explore a new path. Like all the external things about that person, right? Well, right. Well, or the thing the things that I chose for that person are mm-hmm. gone. Um, so to be to I guess that hits a point for me where I'm like. Well, I'd rather just like make a new person. Well, so like what were like or in Soak or in um Srod's case, uh what are the things that you chose that are gone? So like for for Soak specifically, it was like, okay, we're questing after this object and we've like established this like sweet team of bone bagger bone baggers who are also gonna like run a fight club and like do all this stuff. Yeah. And then all all of all of that just kind of like disappeared because they died right and also all the things like even the like physical locations of the things that i was interacting with were gone um where i was like well i'm not interested in like starting from zero like i I don't i I don't if i'm gonna start if i'm gonna start from zero i want to i want to make a new person um i guess is what it really comes down to. yeah it feels like you don't enjoy shifts in the status quo uh, because that was another situation where I was like, yeah, I've always been planning to move you guys into the future. Yeah. Have you dick around in the future and then come back. But it was just but then me. it was like everybody else died. Right. And so and I was like, well, now anyway. I want to die. Like if everyone else right. is dead, I don't want to be right around. I don't still want to be the one hangover thing. So that's sort of and this this feels similar to that to me. Right. Uh, even though it's not quite as on like a, a huge scale. Right. But it feels like it's because it's like, oh, our status quo got shifted. We're now not the initial. The interesting thing to me is um, both that shift forward in time and this uh, this uh, current situation both feel to me like temporary setbacks that seem like to you to feel like permanent setbacks in that like we know that the like the Aboleth's curse is uh, healable. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I told you guys that in the in the thing that the slime person thing can be healed it's just a little bit above jeff's uh trevor's uh pay grade um and the aboleth obviously can be killed or you know neutralized so it's like well essentially this is just like a couple of weeks of game stuff before you go back to the way they were like go back to the external things being the same well Um, and now with the like not wandering army yeah retcon that's fine i'm down with all that yeah but that but that i think pushed it over to me towards like 
Well, great. Well, now I'm just like but you wanted a to be, feeble-minded murderer, and I don't want to be that. Like yeah. that's not what I want. But play. you wanted to be dead before that even came up, though. Yes, because and I and that was because I was like, well, we lost. Like it felt like yeah. we tried, and like I played this person, and like we just we we did what we could, and we lost, and like I'm fine with that. Um, and then. Fe- uh, feeling like so i guess this is sort of separate but t- very tightly tied together um feeling like well we lost but like also no like you you still like still like you're still him like you still have to be him yeah you know interesting. what i mean because to me it's you lost but you don't have to it doesn't have to be permanent right um but for you you would rather yeah i didn't want the out i guess is really what it boils down yeah, to yeah you you would if you lost that character's a loser and you don't want to have to play a loser <laughs> not even that i don't want to play i don't mind playing losers like i don't want to play a winner who lost that's a loser he's that's a loser like, in my like book so nothing so never did anything right and nothing ever went positively for him in right. the entirety of that arc well um, that's the thing though is but also soak never would w- like refused to bow or like be affected or like allow that he wasn't indomitable in the world and that's like and the first time that he was like dominable was the moment that he was like that it was like cool i'm done and i do think it's interesting that the first time that srad is like dominable is when it's like well cool then he's dead and i, I want to make a new character which doesn't mean anything one way or the other it's just interesting like i just wonder if that's part of it flip side of it though then would be the first time that uh rake was dominable she was like okay i guess i'm dominable yeah, yeah. um and so i don't know that that's i don't think that's don't like think a permanent that's really thing like for your tied characters. to it yeah. yeah but also rake died like uh you know rake didn't uh oh or, or like uh, speaking rake, of the peony thing where he was like thing. no i'm i'm the vicar of uh this demon lord right. and you serve me now and i was like is that true and i made a role and it was true and i was like okay i guess i serve right. you now it was when so, right the helmet thing was when it Right. And right. where I was like, oh, well, I'm like not Rake anymore. I'm like something else. Right. But I, I don't think when it's Rake is like when it's like I'm the vicar and you serve me now is like presenting you with a choice that you can like choose to go along with or not. And you chose to go along with it. But when you're presented with a choice you can choose to go along with or not and you choose not to go along with it. And then there are consequences to that that like are inescapable then it feels a little bit like then it's like oh well then i don't want to well i don't want to play in 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 this world right no i don't disagree and i think that was because i was like man it'd be it'd be i want here's the character i want to play i want to play a like wandering uh missionary style character who is trying to convert people into demon worship right so when someone is like hey i'm possessed by the demon that you're trying to convert people to are you going to come with me or are you going to not do that and i'm like well i guess i'm going to come with you because that's this is like the thing that i've said i want to do right um and then to after that happens to be like well we killed the guy and now we're wiping your brain i'm like well Well, damn because you created a character who wanted to be a demon worshiper in a world that already existed that didn't like wasn't also demon worshipy sure you know or like in in this one yeah yeah it's just that i I, it's like interesting i I don't think there's a obviously there's no like right or wrong on it it's all just like preference and play and the the lesson to those at home is that (laughs) conversations like this are important between dms and players to find a happy medium where everybody feels challenged and also like they get to play the kind of game they want to play right um which is why i find this useful is like to figure out what the limits on that what what it is that irks so that it's like that doesn't get affected but it doesn't affect like because i'm also not interested in a game where like you guys like where there's a game with no consequences you know no and i i think i don't know i i mean at least i hope that i don't that that's not what i actually want and that i just think that that that's the case and the, you know what i mean yeah like, and, and i guess they'll say that there's not a potential for big consequences right is, I, I, suppose. I really hope like as we keep talking about this i'm really hoping i'm not actually the kind of player who is just like well things didn't go my way so now i'm done because i i don't feel like i'm that guy neither do i do you no i don't think you're that okay. way okay because like uh, as we keep talking about it, I'm like I I don't know I maybe that is a little bit of it uh, I don't know I think I, this this is the theory that I have 
towards it, which is that like I th- I wonder and I think that it might be actually that it's like kind of externally driven. I feel like in all three instances, um, you got removed from the party. Like in this instance, you kind of got you've been removed from the party because you've all been ascent. The party's been like removed from itself. Mm -hmm. In Soak, you got removed from the party because they all died and you lived. With Rake, you got removed from the party because, like, you became kind of a different thing. And uh, the next week we played, it was just you and Chelsea. So instead of, like, immediately resolving it, we played that session out with Chelsea um, kind of being the person in focus. And so I wonder if, if in part, it's like... Because I think with Soaking Paw, if... If Jeff hadn't gotten, like, if Jeff hadn't died and Tim and, and Aaron, if they had all lived and we had all, you'd all been alive going through that into the future, I wonder, I feel like then you would have been like, this is cool. This is fun. Yeah. And I feel I think like, so too. I feel like with Rake, if Rake had had her memory loss or wiped and then we went immediately into the next, no, it was in that same game, right? Cause that was the session that was just you and Chelsea when all of that went down. Um, no, my memory was wiped and then, me and Chelsea's session, I was wiped the whole time. Right. And which I still think was a very fun and cool session. Yeah. Um, I know you didn't enjoy I it. I didn't like it. But like <laughs> it gave, it was very, narratively, it was really cool. And like experientially, it was just very fun with you playing like a bunch of gnome memory flashbacks was like just a really cool thing especially for chelsea to like dig into her character yeah i um, think if i had known walking into it that that's what what, what it was going to be like i would have enjoyed it yeah it was but just I, the, it was an improvised session right and I, I think i walked into it like i was like man what's happening to me and yeah. then i just didn't get to find out and this if if the rest of the party uh like if you guys weren't enchanted but were stuck in this thing then I feel like you would have been like, okay, maybe. Like if you were just slime people, uh, like water breathing slime people in a pit under the castle, but you were yourselves, you probably would have been into it. I think maybe, maybe. I don't think you. I would don't know have. about that. I don't think you would have at all. I think you would have been like, no, we lost. I think, I think the 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 thread I'm seeing, and tell me if you think this is accurate from an outside perspective, because I am now doubting my ability to like assess myself. Sure. Um, is. I think I don't like, uh, or like I, it like instantly turns me off to feel like, like, okay, this thing is happening to you now. Um, yeah. and then I'm like, well, I don't want it. And then I just, yeah, don't. it's, it's interesting. Cause it feels like, like, it feels like it feels like I'm railroading when in reality I'm like, I, I mean, mechanically you guys died. So like, or, or like mechanically you like this thing existed and they put it on your head so the consequences are your memory wipes like you you're not you're not immune to the effects that happen to npcs you're just better at like preventing or like avoiding or preventing them but yeah it does feel like uh that those when those mechanical things those mechanical advantages get put passed on to you guys i figured it out what it's when i feel like i've i'm doing like i'm like well fuck i guess my character's doing this thing but i as a player didn't want want to do that thing yeah. and then there are consequences for that yeah um that's what's it i think that's what it is because like so it's like the fact that you so, had to so stay it's and like, fight when you wanted to run away right or like um where i'm like f- well i guess we're charging forward even though i know this means we're going to die and then the consequences are actually that i like don't get to die <laughs> yeah like are where i'm like ah oh, damn it like that just feels shitty yeah. or i'm like all right the consequences are like the choice is uh like Either draw a line in the sand and give up your backstory or like motivations or like get into a fight um, with the gnome people. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm fighting the gnome people. And then there are consequences and I like lose my memories and stuff. And I'm like, well, fuck, I didn't even want to do that. Yeah, right. It's I think that's what it is, is feeling like stuff happens and i'm like well f- yeah but i didn't even want to do the thing that yeah, put right. me in this position um which is just like a why am i playing characters who don't act the way that i want to act yeah <laughs> is a weird situation i guess i'm putting myself in well not necessarily i mean that's is that also it? what's is cool that part about of it maybe that's part of it perhaps it's even a multifaceted issue <laughs> maybe 
I mean, I, that does seem the the most nuanced of the answers. So I I would tend to believe that that is probably what's going on is that of like, well, I didn't want to be doing this, and now the consequence, like, and now and now I'm paying a price for a thing I didn't even want to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, like, that's what I think that that was uh, that sums up pretty much what I was feeling in the session today. Right. Where I was like, well, I don't really want to. I like walked in here thinking about. I, I actually was thinking about last week where I was like, man, we're killing people in the town that I want to rule. Right. And like, I, I don't want to do that. Um, and I've been going out of my way to like incapacitate people without killing them. Right. Um, and then being like, damn, I don't want to like hurt people here. Uh, and then spending this session being like, well, I guess we're fighting this, these people now. And then it's like, well, I'm going to close the door on them. And then feeling right. like, well, nope, I guess we're just going to really do this. And then feeling like, well, I guess we're, we should run away. And then, well, no, I guess we're still actually doing this. So feeling like, uh, feeling like, I guess I'll go along or like I'll do this thing but not really feeling it and what i would say the 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 one thing i would suggest or throw out is is that like what i noticed then the one thing you're not doing is is that you're like well uh i shut the door that you're mechanically and like through actions indicating like i don't want to go down i don't want to do this but you're not saying like in character to the other characters like we shouldn't do this like we shouldn't harm these people they're my like rather than having that be a moment to like actually voice those concerns either as a player or more specifically as the character and like make that be a moment to like actually stop i think there's also a certain and this is not specific to you but i think there's also a feeling of like well that's going to be more boring than just like going into this fight like that's like i don't want to like slow down stuff yeah instead of being like oh but it's actually those conversations are more interesting than fighting the fifth warg that we're going to fight like it's it's actually fun to have to stop and be like no i'm not going further like we're, we're but not i don't want to do that either i don't want to be the guy who's like <laughs> but if, if everyone else is like let's chase him i don't want to be the guy who's like we shouldn't i'm, well, I'm not doing it well you know but I, I think mean? also i think at least with our party i don't think there's anybody who is like really stoked about like ki- like killing and, and violence i think like i think there's a lot of i think most people in the party at, at my game are like people who are like well i guess um um, because I don't think there is a lot of like, like, no, like better, like angels of our better judgment, like, please, it's, it's usually like, okay, <laughs> and we go like that. So I actually, yeah, I wonder if that's part of it is that there just hasn't been like a clear, like from anybody of like, no, like, what are we like? What are, why are we doing this? What are we doing? And like, stop and have that conversation, I think is the conversation that I've been wondering where that is amongst the characters is the like, wait, wait, <laughs> like the wait, the hold up conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I feel like then that gets it out and lets everybody else know where your character is at. Even even if it's like, I just need the simplest, the minorest uh, reason to believe or or to like be convinced of what we're doing. But like, I can't like, I can't be. Yeah, I, I mean, I've felt that with with like within our game, the game that I'm playing with yours. Like, there's a lot of moments where I'm like, I don't even really understand why we're reacting the way we are. Um, but I also don't want to be the person that questions it because I don't want to seem like a spoil sport. And it also slows everything down. And like, it does. I, if three people are like, hey, we're going to go do this thing it's pretty much going to happen. Like it's, it's pretty much yeah. going to happen. So, but I do think there's something to, to being able to read the table to be able to determine if it's like, Oh, we're doing this because it seems fun or we're doing this because it seems like it's the C that came after B that came after a, and especially at least with my games and, and the way that I feel like you DM yours is like, the one bit of meta gaming knowledge is is like, oh, Alan doesn't do an A B C D game. Like after D, there's like E and one and beta. Like there's all sorts of options out of it. Why are we going for the one that is like the most immediate? Like wait, <laughs> like that like I can and and can do that, or that I can be like I'm gonna look for like some boards to put over the hole or something like that. Like the immediate reactionness of D and D doesn't necessarily fit our DMing styles in terms of how we Mm -hmm. enable people to like do more than just like what their mechanics are. And I think that that then does create some like weird situations where it feels you feel mechanically compelled to follow the story as it's uh, presenting itself versus like playing actually playing inside of it. Right. That's interesting. I don't know. That sounds good, though. It sounds good. It does. It's hard to do, though. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I wonder. So I, I mean, I apologize for being like a salty little baby. I don't mind. Uh, All I, right. Um, uh, it, it got us to this point. I still uh, like for the record for you and for anyone listening to this podcast, you are far and away the best DM I've ever had. Oh, thank you. Like, I appreciate that. Just saying that Same. flat out. And um, I have a present coming for you ooh. that I'll give you next week. Aw. Um, but I will also say that doesn't mean you can that, be salty. Uh, I and you can have, have st- enjoyed all of your sessions. That's totally fine. There have been three that I did not like. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it, today I is think one of them. If there's one flaw I have that might be considered a, a plus, it's that I don't. I'm not very good at hiding my feelings. <laughs> That's why there are other people at the table. Um, I do think, and at this point, obviously, we've gone on long enough that there's no reason to go forward. But I guess the the thing that I think is really interesting now, based on what we talked about, is is like how do you, as a DM, enable that conversation? The Which like, conversation? The like, the like, hey, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let's take a second and decide what we really want to do, and yeah. like, um, and make that feel safe to to have as a a party and like interesting in and of itself. It's tough. Um, I mean, I hate to say that I think it comes down to like reading the moment because that's yeah. there. There really is just so much extra that a DM has to do um, to the point where like I think you don't sometimes you don't even really have the time or mental capacity to enjoy the moment. Yeah, um, you get to like enjoy it. The things that have happened after, like after session, you're like, damn, that went really interestingly, and like yeah. it's satisfying in a different way. Um, but I, I think, unfortunately, this this may be one of those things where you like someone's like, well, I'm gonna uh, take the zip line, I'm gonna jump down the zip line, and you see like a pause or like everyone in the room being like, well, um, yeah. and then being like, okay, do you guys want to take a second out of character and like talk about this stuff, or like, uh, does anyone need any clarity on like? I think po- posing it as a question helps maybe because yeah. you, you leave an opening for someone to be like, well, does the, what, what do we see? Is there anything we're missing in here? Or right. that, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah. That's probably the best answer. I, I don't know that it is because I, I, this is something that we've never had to really broach before. And I, I don't think has ever come up in any of the games I've run either. Well, I don't think it's come up in the, in the same sense that it hasn't come up in mind of like, it's not something anybody has sp- like spoken to. Right. Because again, you don't necessarily feel like i don't know that i've ever played a game where i feel comfortable slowing down the action right um well nobody wants to do that right um especially if it's for something as piddling as like character backstory or like character motivations or morals it's sure like never to some- be clear I'd, I'd rather this i'd rather like head first into tpk and like feel bad about it than um spend a session doing nothing because everyone has to like break down for 10 minutes what their perspective or like ideas are about the best possible course of action like that's Be- so boring best possible course of action yes uh motivations and like what their characters are feeling i actually disagree i actually think like if we that's had, fine if it's yeah, like if it, if it was a session where it was like this is what i'm feeling right now as a character and like where it's like i don't i want to run away because like i just don't i feel like we're gonna die and like being able to directly say that actually does feel fun sure but i agree of like so what's the best strategy doesn't feel fun to me. Yeah. But the best like clarifying out like the sort of like I think like I really am uncomfortable like the the emotional weight of the situation somehow is interesting. And I, I guess the simplest way to do that is probably like you said is to just be like before we do this does anybody need any clarity and then give people a chance to be like oh I'm going to change what I'm doing then. Yeah. It's probably the easiest thing to do. Yeah. I can't I think that, wait I mean, to try that. That's how I approach uh, if someone's making a decision that's seems really dubious based on what i understand the situation to be um i'll usually open that one up too yeah because and i think you can handle it the same way where for example if someone's going to run at something that's like clearly going to destroy them or something and being like okay are you sure you want to do that um maybe i can make make more clear to you what this looks like or what you're up against yeah because i just want to make sure that you're going into this with all the information that you're character probably has at hand i think interjecting with something similar to that question but aimed at motivation rather than like information yeah might be a way to do that i'm not sure yeah try it it'd be interesting yeah i'm i look forward to it you know what i also look forward to Uh uh-oh i look forward to continuing this isn't words of the day i thought you were it's you did the tone of voice the tone of voice for it Uh, you know what else folks no uh abolists are fucking fun like fun big bad evil guys can i pitch something to you yeah uh since I'm now on a angry um, 
revenge motivated arc. Yeah. May and since perhaps this is a compromise on letting Srad die, uh, may I rebuild him as a paladin for next week? Sure. I don't care about that. Specifically a vengeance paladin. Yeah, that's fine with me. Um yeah, that's fun. Cool. Um yeah, Abolis are great though. They're perfect for making like a creepy little town, like a little Stepford village. Yeah. Do that is that what they do? They like enthrall people? Mm Mm-hmm. That's so creepy and uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. It's what they're really good at. I'm going to kill Stevis. Yeah. I'm going to kill that guy. Stevis also was the one that uh, was doing all the telekinesis and stuff. What telekinesis? When the 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 uh, murderer uh, or the, the person was going to get hung and then Jeff came in and like grabbed him in giant eagle form. Oh. Steve, that he like something was like doing telekinesis to like hold him in place. Oh yeah, it was Steve. We didn't know. Yeah, I still, I actually thought it was the um, singer singer by then because she was the one because he deferred to her for like blessing or like doing the execution or something. And yeah, I was it's like, aha. Oh, it's because Abolists don't believe in gods and he's a patron. Oh, it's, it's his Jesus. A, All right. Patron. Yeah, that's deep. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't so he's have been like, able to do that. No, thanks. Yeah. That's a puzzle piece. I never would. Not even yeah. on my smartest day would I be able to do that one. I didn't expect it to. No, no I know. I'm not that saying that was that was a me. puzzle piece. I'm just saying, damn, that was that's some lore. That's that's a lore motivation. Yeah. Damn. I would, I that's the Avalis are fun. Anyway, well played, Alan. Uh, Yo, uh oh, this is the tone. This is the tone. Okay, I'm ready. Here's uh, here's what I've learned from running an Avalith. Okay, you always got to keep one eye open and the other two open too. Hey. hey. <laughs>